is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when he said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. For in the Lord's house we'll find something that will suit our very own soul. In the Lord's house we should be able to come in and find some peace, some compassion, and some understanding. Aren't you glad when he said, let us go? Amen. All the places I can find myself at, mm -hmm. there's no better place than to be in the presence of the Lord. Yes, For when I think of the goodness of Jesus yes, and all he's done for me, right, somebody is a living testimony mm -hmm. of what the Lord has done for you Amen. and where he's brought you from. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are thankful once again for this opportunity to gather in this place to give you praise, honor, and glory. And Father, right now we pray that you touch every heart, Lord, this morning, Lord. We ask that you just come into our midst this morning, Lord, that we can feel thy presence. Oh, Lord, we're thankful for your keeping. We well, thank you, thankful, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we're grateful this morning that your love may abound within our hearts as we endeavor to worship you in spirit and in truth. And now, Lord, be with us, Lord, as only you can do it. For these and all your blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Children, we want to welcome you once again to the worship services here at Jerusalem Baptist Church for those of you who are uh, live and in person and those of you who are watching via live stream. Uh, certainly we pray that we do something today that may inspire you and encourage your heart as you Amen. walk closer with the Lord. Amen. Uh, at this time we're going to ask that our praise team come and give us an opening selection and then we'll have a uh, morning prayer by Deacon James.
you. And there's joy when we look to you. And we thank you for that joy. In the midst of our hurts, in the midst of our sorrows, we can still say thank you. Because you promised that you would wipe away all the tears from our eyes. You tell us, you encourage us that to be absent from this old body is to be with you. So we take great joy and pleasure in knowing that one day, when we all finish this old busy walk of life, you, we're going to meet you. Well, Psalm says that the gate I know. That's somebody waiting. That's the gate I know. Mama, daddy, sisters, brothers, relatives, they are the gate I know. But the best part about it, Jesus is at the gate. And we know Jordan River, Jesus will help us to cross. Father, we thank you for Pastor David Brackett. Thank you, Lord. What a man, what a man, what a man. Tries to do what is right for you. And Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. I thank you for him. Our church family thanks you for him. Busy couple weeks he's had, Lord. And he's still going strong. But it's not by his might, it's by your might. And we thank you for that. We thank you for his companion, Sister Jackie. We thank you for our entire Jerusalem church family. And we thank you for this Sunday known as Palm Sunday. Knowing how you rode in Jerusalem on a donkey triumphantly. How they just lavish you with Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. But you being the omnipotent God, new in advance, just a few days later, crucified, crucified. Like Pastor told us last week, we, we betrayed you, Lord. We betrayed you, we let you down. But in spite of it all, that's why Jesus came and shed his precious blood. That all might have the right to the tree of life. Now God, we ask your blessing upon us for the remainder of this day. There was not to be too more too concerned about tomorrow. Sufficient is this day with all of this issue that it already has for us. And we thank you that you already have tomorrow come. Just have us to live this day pleading in your sight. And we give you the honor and the glory that you so wish you deserve. Amen. Amen.
So please, if you have any questions about the upcoming election, see Sister Stanfield. She has information relative to that, and if you got questions, uh, she can probably put you in the point you in the right direction. Some things that uh, need to be done that we need to do. But we're so happy on this Palm Sunday. Amen. Uh -huh. Jesus makes us to be here once again. Yes, sir. And we can celebrate all that he has provided for us. Yes, sir. There's a word for us found in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. And I want to lift passages 1 to 11. It's Matthew chapter 21, lifting verses 1 to 11. I'm going to ask that all of you that can, that you understand, that you honor God in the reading of his word. Matthew chapter 21, beginning with the first verse and concluding with the 11th verse. Matthew 21, verse 1, concluding with verse 11. When you have it, say amen. 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 Matthew 21, beginning with the first verse, we find these words recorded. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to a village ahead of you, and at once, at once you will find a donkey tied there and a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord, say that the Lord needs them, mm -hmm. and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. Yeah. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. Mm -hmm. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. While others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Mm -hmm. Crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest mm -hmm. heaven. Mm -hmm. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Mm -hmm. The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Yes, After sir. selection from the choir, I want to talk from the subject. Jesus seen, but yet not seen. Jesus seen, but yet not seen.
all our heavenly Father. Lord, it is once again that we are here in this place. We come, Lord, today, Lord, to lift up your name, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray that something might be said this hour that might help somebody along life's way. Amen. We pray right now, Lord, that you would bring up one of the minds in the focus. It's a man, woman, boy, girl, and they come to know you in a more intimate way. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that all that we do and say this hour, let your spirit flow from heart to heart. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us once again, as only you can allow it. Now bless, Lord, from this moment forward, for these and all the blessings we ask and we pray in the marvelous Matthew's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Jesus seen, but yet not seen. Today in our text, it's a day that many have anxiously anticipate a day when Jesus Christ makes his final entry into the beloved city called Jerusalem. Yes, sir. It has been a short time since the inception of his earthly ministry. He has preached to many, he has performed great miracles. And the crowds have followed him wherever he has gone. As a matter of fact, one of his last miracles, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, it caused a great multitude of people to believe. And on this day, as he makes his final approach toward the city, there are people everywhere. The streets are lined and there is great anticipation. My beloved, when we look at how things unfold, some have come for one thing and some have come for something all together. Maybe that the way it is sometimes with the people in the church. Mm -hmm. Some see something and miss seeing important things all together. Right, right. My beloved, when you see Jesus, but do not see him in his fullness, it is a dangerous position to be in. So Jesus tells his disciples, he says two of them, and he tells them to go get a donkey. Yes, he did. A coat. Yes, he did. And when you get them, bring them to me. And if anybody asks you, just tell them that I have need of them. The symbolism here is that the king would come riding in on a donkey, which symbolizes humility mm -hmm. and peace. Right, right, right. And so it was that they bring the donkey to him, and he sets up, he sits upon him, they put their coats on him, and he sits upon him, and he makes his entry into Jerusalem. Right, right. My, 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 what a day. As he comes into the city. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say here in the sixth verse that they, after they bought the donkey, they called and placed their cloaks on them and for, for Jesus to sit on. It says in very, verse 8, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. That's right. While others cut branches from trees mm -hmm. and spread them on the road. Show up, show up. There was some there that saw him for the Messiah. After all he had taught and all that he had exemplified that they realized that there was something special about Jesus. My beloved, there were still others. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed and shouted. Mm -hmm. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Someone saw him. 
Amen. As a Messiah. By the word Son of David. That they realize that there was something special about him. Yes. But then when we get to the 10th verse, it says, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Right, right. Everybody standing on the street corner who had lined the streets of Jerusalem, who looked and watched, did not comprehend the fullness of who Jesus really was. Mm -hmm. And so they asked the questions and the crowds answered. Listen to what their answer is. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth yeah. in Galilee. Yeah. My beloved, sometimes we find ourselves in precarious predicaments when we can see things, but yet we don't see them. In this post-resurrection era in which we worship, I wonder how many of us see Jesus for who he really is. Mm -hmm. I wish I had somebody praying for me. So oftentimes we see people and uh, we miss it because we don't see Jesus. We understand that he is the Son of God and we know about his divinity. But it's something altogether different when we uh, embrace him in his lordship. Mm -hmm. That means for you and I that so oftentimes that uh, we know that God uh, in Jesus by being the Son of God has all power in his hands. Mm -hmm. But when are we going to allow him to let him lead us in our living? Yeah. In other words, my beloved, uh, yeah, he should only be Lord in your life when your back is against the wall. But we have to learn how to live every day of our lives that he is truly Lord of our lives. That's right. I mean, if you just try it when things are going good and making Lord of your life, but think about how much peace you ought to have. We have to not just call on the Lord when we are in trouble when things are not going away, but learn how to worship him in spirit and in truth in every day of your life. When you got a good job, give God some praise. When, when, when your body is feeling good, give God some praise. Don't wait till you get to a point in your life where you can't do it. serve the Lord until they can't do anything else. You know, when you can't go anyplace else, when you can't make it to the club any longer, when you can't drive and go where you want to go. This whole thing is the only thing we want to give our time. I wish I had some other time. We want to stop giving the Lord left of it. You know, you're not giving the devil all these years, but you don't want to give the Lord anything. And you can bear Because you're giving it all away. When are we going to learn how to give the Lord our best? While we still can. We do the very best that we can do. Yeah, we see him in his divinity, but it's something altogether different to embrace him in his lordship. That means that you're, gonna, that you're Lord of my life. That means that I'm going to give it over to you. That I'm, It's not about my understanding. It's not about uh, what I think, but it's all about you being Lord of my life and speaking to my heart through your precious Holy Spirit. In other words, the Lord, I give it over to you. Yeah. I'm not going to try to figure it out on my own. Amen. And then, my beloved, uh, not only that, but we ought to see him in his salvific, salvific process. The process of delivering us from our sin. And sometimes we only see Christ the way we want to see him, but we don't embrace him in his fullness. Well, and this is what happened to uh, on those city streets as they made their way into Jerusalem. The crowds were on both sides and the crowds were pressing in and, and they came to see and they came to try to understand what was taking place on the day. Many had gathered, but many did not see him as a Messiah. Uh -huh. When we look at everything that Jesus had done, he had healed the sick, he had raised the dead, he had done some that nobody else had done. And people had come because they had heard about the power that this man had possessed. They had heard about how he fed 5,000 people. They had heard about how he had done great miracles that nobody else could do. They had heard that there was something special about this man because he was a type of person that would always have an answer when people tried to trap him and trick him. There was something special and people would come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They saw him coming. Saw him coming. Yet they didn't see for who he really was. Right. Oh, and we have to be careful because we're prone to make the same mistake. When we come to church uh, only half-hearted, when we come with only a partial commitment, when we come because we're not fully in, but we come because we're trying to
to gain something for ourselves rather than give God praise for what he's already done for us. When you think about where the Lord has brought you in, every child of God ought to have a testimony. Amen. When I go back to the triumphal entry, I just believe that there should have been somebody there, who that should have known something about what Jesus has done. Where were you, Bartimaeus, after the Lord had healed you? Where were you, the woman at the well? And let the world know the love, yeah, this man is, is the Messiah. And he's more than what you just see with the natural eye because he's done something for me and brought me from a mighty long way. I stop out of that somebody knows when the Lord has done something for you, you see the fullness of the Lord. And in order to see the fullness of the Lord, sometimes you have to go through some things. In other words, you have to be down and out in order for him to bring you in. Sometimes you have to be sick before you can be healed. Sometimes you have to go through some difficult periods before you can be delivered. But when I see Jesus, I want to see him in his fullness. Those who were gathered there were looking as he made his way into the city. Amen. Question of, the, the prevailing question of the, uh, of the hour was, who is it? Mm-hmm. Still, we, we see in the, in, the, in the 11th verse that the crowds answer. This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Some only saw him as a prophet. Right. They recognize him uh, as a Messiah. Yeah. And we have to be careful that we don't minimize, minimize or marginalize what the Lord has done for us. Yeah. You know, I learned a long time ago that I don't discount the Lord. Yeah. And the way you see him may not be the same way that I see him yeah. because of what he's done for you in your life. Some folk he's blessed and brought them from a mighty long way. They don't mind telling somebody that he is all my God. Yeah. Some folk he's delivered from, from the stain of sin. And they don't mind telling somebody that I was doomed and on my way to hell. But God made a way out of my, out of my life and, and turned my life around. Some people don't mind telling somebody that he's a great healer. Some people don't mind telling somebody else that he's a way out of the way. Somebody here today must tell somebody that he's a father to the fathers and a mother to the mother. to the city. People are looking on and they're trying to figure this thing out. And then there are still those who are a part of the crowd who were there for the wrong reason. Because they were looking for a deliverance. Yes, sir. You know, people will play up to you when they think you have something for them. Right. Uh, some folk were there because they were tired of their Roman occupiers right. Right. who were in the city. Right. And surely if this man is a king, uh-huh. yeah. well, they looked at it with contempt, first of all, because he wrote it in the book. Come on, watch out. And they said, who, this king? Well, well perhaps this king is going to step forward right. and set us free. Some folk had come that day because they thought there was going to be a great revolution. Uh-huh. In other words, uh, well, we will be in power when, when, when the king gets to town. Yeah. And people have heard about it and they heard people talk about this king. For sure that they thought this king would set them free and liberate them. But what they didn't realize is that it wasn't about a physical li- uh, liberation, but it was about a spiritual liberation. And he had come into Jerusalem because he was going to come in to set the captives free. He was coming into town because he was coming to do a new thing and, and set a new world order. He was coming into town because he was coming to deliver those who had been oppressed and those who had felt uh, less than adequate. He was coming into Deliver us from death and to make a new way of living for us and to tell us that everything was going to be all right. But there are some folk that saw him but did not see him. But I stopped out of there and somebody knows that if the Lord has done anything for you, that you ought to see him in a way that nobody else sees him. If he's done anything for anybody here, you ought to know me ought to shout it out that he's going to go and keep the king. You ought to know me ought to shout it out that he can do for you what nobody else can do. Has anybody seen the Lord?
we remind of how Jesus was true before him. How it was that he on that day that when he came into the beloved city, they began to look in the eyes of all those who were standing on both sides of the street. He began to declare and let them know that all hope was not lost. But you see, some people had a hard time seeing him because he did not look like what they thought he should look like. In other words, he did not offer them what they were looking for. But I stopped by to let somebody know today that if you keep your hand in the master's hand, if you learn how to hold on just a little while longer, the Lord will make a way somehow. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? I don't know about you this morning, but when I see Jesus, I see more than what other folk may see. When I see Jesus, I see where he's brought me from. When I see Jesus, I see that he's been my way out of nowhere. When I see Jesus, I see him as a lily of the valley and a bright and morning star. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? When I see Jesus, I see him as my Alpha and my Omega. When I see Jesus, I see him as a bridge over troubled waters. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? When I see Jesus, I see him as my all in all and my everything. I see him, I see him as a friend to the friendless. I see him. Does anybody see him this morning? Well, if you're having a hard time seeing him, I want you to travel back with me and go back to the place where you first found the Lord. Go back to the place when you were trying to make it in. You were too mean to live and too afraid to die. When things were not going away, go back. And some of us have to go back a little bit further than other folks. But everybody, I said everybody, everybody ought to have a place where you met the Lord or where the Lord found you. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know where the Lord found you? I had to search and I had to search, but I'm reminded of a place where the Lord met me, where the Lord healed me. When the Lord blessed me, when the Lord brought me out. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? This is all just been sitting here this morning and act like you've arrived and you've been saved all your life. But you ought to be able to tell somebody, I've had my moments, I've had my time. I've had some situations that I wasn't proud of. But all praise be to God. When I found the Lord, when I found the Lord, Everything was all right. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? And I see him working in my life. I don't know about you, but you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it. You can't make me quit because it's too big too good to me. You can't make me give up and throw in the towel because my God's been a good God. He's put clothes on my back and food on my table. He's open the doors that no man can close. Yeah. And I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad about it. Is there anybody glad? Yeah. Is there anybody glad about what Jesus has done? If you want to tell him thank you, yeah. you want to tell him thank you for where he's brought you from. Tell him thank you. I see you, Lord. I see you, but nobody else can see you. I see you in my midnight hour. I see you in all of my trouble. I see you in all of my suffering. I see you even in my sickness. I see you, oh, I see the Lord. You ought to be glad today that you serve a God who is able to meet you right where you are. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Is there anybody glad? Is there anybody glad about my Jesus? Is there anybody glad about what he's done for you? Is there anybody glad about what he's doing right now? I'm so glad that I see Jesus. You know what else fails? I can take a closer look and tell somebody 
that I've been delivered from, that I've been born again, that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I don't care about you, that when everything else falls apart, you ought to be glad about the fact that you are a child of God, that you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that can't nobody do you like the Lord can. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? My God is a good God. Do you know what I'm talking about? Won't he make a way out of no way? Has he blessed anybody this morning? You want to tell the Lord, thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh, I better thank you this morning. For what you've done for me. For what you're doing right now. I see the Lord, but I can't see anything else. When my life gets hard and my way goes dim, I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Spirits to do in our minds and in our hearts 
that we can continue to do the work that you have done for us. And now, Lord, we pray right now for every situation. Through one that needs a job, Lord, we'll open up the door. Through the one that needs a physical healing of the body, oh, Lord, move in a mighty special way. Through the one that just needs a spiritual cleansing, Lord, a healing of the mind, Lord, move in a mighty special way. To the ones that are here, Lord, who just needs a, a family brought back together, Lord, move in a mighty special way. To the ones who are sad and stunned by death and who experience death, Lord, best that you comfort them, Lord, and let them know that earth knows no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Father, we're thankful for everything that you shared, and Lord, above all, help us to see you when others can't see you, Lord. That we can be proclamators of your goodness, that we can tell the world in which we live, that we serve God who is able to meet us right where we are. Oh Lord, we say thank you for your many, many blessings. Now Lord, continue to be with us. Continue to go before us, lead, guide, and direct. It's only you can do it. For these are the blessings we ask you to pray in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Now our final benediction, let the church say amen.